Hey everybody, this is Frey bringing you a brand new audio commentary for WCReplays.com. This audio is copyright 2006 WC Replays. Um, I'm going to be doing a game between Sweet and uh, Yellow, um, a.k.a. ChinaNet So Good. Um, let's get this pause at the two minute mark. Uh, 1x speed, Fog of War on from Sweet's point of view. Um, I'll give you a little introduction to this game. I've been getting quite a few requests to do an audio commentary on Undead vs. Human, all of which came from Cage. So this one's for you, buddy. This game uh, is going to f- it's gonna be one where the human actually doesn't expand. Um, that may seem kind of odd, but uh, it's actually a strategy that you'll see quite a bit. And what it what it does in particular is it, it kind of accelerates the nuking power of the human player. And uh, for anybody that's had to deal with uh, human nukes, uh, you know that they can be quite painful. And in fact, um, re- really all in all, a uh, human nuke against undead is actually a l- even a little bit stronger than undead nuke against human. Um, although that's debatable, so I don't want to get in a big fight over that one. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and get this game unpaused uh, in three, two, one, unpause. Um, Sweet went for early altar, which is what you have to do against human um, in order to be able to deal with uh, him pe- really power creeping or going for an expansion. Um, what Sweet is scouting out with his acolyte uh, is the goblin shop, uh, goblin lab, whatever the hell you call it. Uh, in like the northwest corner of the map, uh, you will often see human players on Twisted Meadows going to creep this instead of their natural expansion because uh, it's closer to their base. Uh, and it, I think, might give sweeter items. I don't actually know. But um, it's not... They, they basically don't have to run their militia as far um, to creep that location out. Um, now, what Yellow is doing, however, he's not going for any of that. He's actually going to try and give Sweet's Death Knight the slip, and he's going to go creep some easy stuff. Um, basically, the human player can just throw their hands up and say, I know I'm going to get harassed, so I'm going to go after something easy so that at least he's not going to be, like, stealing militia. He's, he's not going to be, like, killing off my militia. Um, you also can't be sending a whole lot of militia out creeping if you want to tech fast. I, I would... Which is um, exactly what uh, ChinaNet is doing. ChinaNet, aka Yellow. Um, Sweet sends his ghouls out to do some uh, some of the typical multitask creeping that uh, you want to do uh, against a human player while you're harassing with your Death Knight. And while he's doing that, he ended up finding um, uh, Yellow's uh, footman and Archmage, and a little skirmish breaks out. Uh, he's going to go try and kill that wounded water elemental, which is uh, always what you want to do. A, because water elementals deal a good bit of damage to your army if you don't kill them, and B, because um, they give a footman's worth of experience uh, if you can nab them. And C, they're also fairly easy to surround, even though that wasn't actually a surround there, but they move slow, so they don't escape as easily. Um, what he's going to do here is... Um, go ahead and try to creep his death knight up to level two because um you're in this battle you're mostly uh against ghouls versus footmen you're mostly fighting for surrounds um so he knows that killing those two null wardens will give it to him what he's going to do here after he gets those two kills um he's going to run his whole group uh back towards his base he's going to use the shift click to remove uh two ghouls that are wounded from that group and then uh, regroup that whole, um, all his unwounded units in, into um, a new fighting force while his wounded ghouls run uh, safely back into his base. Um, this is basically just kind of your usual skirmishing. Um, it's, it's really fine. Uh, th- this is kind of what you want to be doing with the human player uh, early on in the game, simply because of their ability to... Um, expand and power creep and and really own you um if if you are with them and you are fighting with them you know they're not expanding you know what they're doing um and and you're kind of keeping them under control um one of the things that's really important though when you're doing this um is using whatever techniques necessary either coiling or or preferably just running them away and saving your mana you've got to keep your ghouls alive in these early fights uh if you end up losing 
a lot of ghouls, like more than like one or two, um, you're going to have like either lumber problems or creeping problems, or you basically you end up with some kind of issue later in the game uh, because either you had to rebuild your ghouls or um, you didn't rebuild your ghouls and so you don't have enough lumber. Um, yeah, so just be careful with your ghouls early on and you'll be a lot happier. Um, basically, what you're... Well, the funny thing here is you actually see Sweet doing a bit more creeping than the human player. Um, and, and whenever you see the human player uh, doing this, and he's actually he's just kind of going after the easy creeps, um, that means you do actually want to spend a little bit more time creeping him yourself. If you see a human player that's really power creeping, um, you really want to focus almost all your energy into harassing. Like, um, you'll, you want to multitask creep, with your ghouls to your death knight gets to level two and then you really want to just throw everything you can at your at his expansion and slow him down without losing ghouls um anyway uh death knight or death knight just got bolted by the mountain king um which is something that i think people fear excessively sometimes uh, i see a lot of people talking about how on the forums um how the mountain king pops out at tier two and will own my entire army and therefore, I can't do anything against human at tier two, which just really isn't true. Um, in fact, you want to keep harassing because with a level one stormbolt, uh, your death knight really, like you know, I'd say four times out of five is gonna be able to escape, um, and you really don't want him creeping that mountain king up to a high level. That that leads to just complete and utter misery. Um, as I'm sure a lot of you have experienced. I think Sweet kind of just botches this here. He ends up turning his Death Knight around and uh, running the wrong way with it. And as a result, he's forced to Town Portal out. It's not the end of the world if that happens. In fact, even if, um, you know, sometimes you will actually get Bolt surrounded. But um, when you first see the Mountain King pop out and his army's active like that, you really got to keep on top of him. Um, to keep the Mountain King low in level, because if he starts out leveling your heroes with that storm bolt, um, you're you're just not going to be able to keep your Death Knight alive or your Lich, or you know something important is going to die as a result of that storm bolt. Um, now remember, I said uh, Sweet saved all his ghouls early on. I think he maybe lost one. Actually, I don't think he lost any. So he was able to build a shade, and that thing is going to be a big help here, because really at any point now. Um, the human player could change his mind and go set up an expansion while massing some tier 2 unit like uh, Dragonhawk Riders or um, or uh, like Gyrocopters. They can even start massing tanks at that point, although if they do it that early in the game, it's not that hard to beat. Um, but anyway, what he's going to use the shade to do is either to find an expansion if the human player tries to set up one, um, however, uh, one thing you'll notice, both the human players, uh, heroes are, are level one. That's a pretty good indicator that he has not creeped out one of the expansions yet, because, um, all the expansion areas on this map, um, creeping them out, if you just have a single hero, it's gonna be enough to bump him up to level two. Um, and also, uh, the human is fairly... You know, I mean, for the most part, Sweet has been on top of whatever the human's doing. They've been skirmishing almost the whole game. And so he knows pretty easily that the uh, human player has not had time to set up an expansion. As a result, you don't see Sweet having to send that shade all over the map. What he's doing instead is um, tracking the human player's creeping progress with it. Um... He went ahead and crept out the shop on his own instead of trying to creep Jack. Um, I think because at this point he knows the human player really, uh, in that he, the human player lost a lot of almost all of his footmen in a skirmish, um, the one where the Death Knight had to town portal out of, and so he knows that he's not power creeping very fast right now. Um, so. He doesn't necessarily have to harass. At this point, it was better for him to go creep out the uh, Goblin Merchant, which often drops Tomes of Experience. I believe they drop Rune Bracers, which drop with which help you deal with the magic damage. Or uh, I forget exactly what the item does, but um, it, it makes your life a little bit less miserable against nukes. 
Um, now, however, uh, he's going to go ahead and start harassing because he needs his ghouls to be gathering lumber. And also because um, these griffins are at large. Basically, if you get in a fight with your ghouls against griffins, um, you're not going to be able to last in the battle for very long at all. Um, because griffins deal magic damage and they also deal splash damage, which equals a lot of dead ghouls pretty fast. Okay. Um, Paladin's out. Um, I th yeah, at this point... Um, the human player is going to try and continue creeping. Um, Sweet really can't afford to keep letting that happen. Um, once you get like a high-level paladin mountain king out, if you haven't had time to really level the hell out of your own heroes, um, you're going to have trouble. So what he's doing is obviously going for the creep jack here. Um, it's the shade that makes that possible, um, just kind of following the enemy's army around. So... Um, Definitely do not underestimate the importance of shades against a human opponent. Um, in this case, um, I mentioned that, that uh, ghouls kind of have trouble against griffins, but um, he is actually getting destroyers out now, so he at least has something to attack the griffins with. That's part of the reason he was able to creep jack at this point and uh, decided it was better to creep on his own before. Um, another reason, yet another reason that uh, it was good for him to creep on his own at the moment was to go ahead and get his Death Knight to level 3, um, which really helps for keeping the Lich alive if your opponent decides to nuke that. Um, it helps keep your Destroyers alive against Towers. Um, he was able to make the Human Player run, however, so for now, um, I think he's checking that expansion because he figured... Uh, figured yellow might have creeped it didn't um it's okay to scout with your army if all you have to do is kind of poke your head around the corner um otherwise obviously you want to send a skeleton to do that work um so he's going to go ahead and creep that shop out more and this time uh you know how i mentioned those rune bracers he actually uh managed to pick up the a pair of those reduces magic damage dealt to the hero by 33 percent uh that is extremely useful against this uh this human army because what you're what you're dealing with primarily is the double nuke from bolt and holy light as well as focus fire from griffins all of that uh counts as magic damage uh i believe when it comes to um being reduced by the rune bracers although i'm sure many people will correct me if i'm wrong about that okay um Sweet went straight for destroyers, which is generally a pretty safe bet if the human has not expanded. And the human built a bunch of gyrocopters, which can be a counter for destroyers, but not when they've just chain morphed. As you see, um, the splash damage from the destroyers absolutely causes those uh, gyrocopters to evaporate at this point. Um, that was about like six or seven gyros, and while gyrocopters are cheap, they're not free. Um, you see Sweet kind of uh, swooping out a little bit here. Uh, reason being is you don't want to leave the destroyers sitting there uh, within range of the towers taking damage. It's better to pull back and regroup a little bit. Um, what Sweet Notice the hero that, uh, that uh, Sweet chose to focus down right there was actually... Uh, he went after the Archmage first. Um, the Archmage at level 3 actually has uh, fewer hit points than I believe the Mountain King or the Paladin at level 1. Um, uh, so he's actually the easiest one to get a kill on, particularly because the uh, Paladin will use his Divine Shield. At least if he's level 2, which I believe... He is, although, oh, actually, no, Sweet managed to kill the Paladin as well. So, um, this is actually, uh, that looks like a, you know, it's a pretty big, uh, pretty big one-up for Sweet at that point, at this point. Um, but it's actually fairly typical. I find this in a lot of my own games, is that against a human player that doesn't expand, um, once you chain morph up, uh, you know, you chain morph up five or six destroyers and, and press the attack right at that point, and you will have a very, very high rate of success. Um, what he's doing right now, his Death Knight was wounded pretty badly. He needs to go back and um, recover, and he's going to harass with his destroyers. Um, 
he makes a slight mistake here and loses one. Um, he should have sent the wounded destroyers back before going for this harass.